For exclusive products, content, and more, visit patreon.com slash revendelation. The words of God spoken by the Holy Spirit have the same effect today. There's just as much power in the name of Jesus today. Through the Holy Spirit, His words come like coals of fire, burning through the minds and hearts of men and women. The Word in the Light and Power of the Spirit by Mariah Woodworth Etter For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we've looked upon and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. The life was made manifest, and we've seen it, and testified to it and proclaimed to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. The words of God have been sent down from heaven to us by Jesus Christ and the holy apostles spoken with the Holy Spirit. They're from God and go forth with a living power. Don't you believe that I'm in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not from myself, but the Father that dwells in me. He does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very works' sake. They testify that the Father is in me and with me. God spoke the worlds into existence. God said, let there be light, and there was light. As he spoke the word, the earth, land, light, darkness, the mighty seas, lakes, mountains, valleys, with all the fruits and flowers, sprang into life, into existence, and full of beauty. He spoke the word, and every living creature stood before him. From the mighty monsters of the sea, the lion of the forest, wild beasts of every kind, down to the little singing bird, they stood looking in wonder and awe at the mighty God that had, by the word of his mouth and the power of his voice, called them into this beautiful world, saying by their very presence, We know you are the great Jehovah the God that inhabits eternity. When the high priest sent the officers to bring Jesus, the question was asked of them, Why didn't you bring him? They said, No one ever spoke the way this man does. With his voice the dead are raised and the lepers cleansed. Those who are blind have their sight restored. The raging storm on the Sea of Galilee was hushed at his word, and the roaring sea became as a sea of glass. The words of God spoken by the Holy Spirit have the same effect today. There's just as much power in the name of Jesus today. Through the Holy Spirit, his words come like coals of fire, burning through the minds and hearts of men and women. They're shot out like arrows dipped in the blood of Jesus, like lightning piercing the king's enemies in the head and lodging in the heart. They fall like dead men. 
They are like David's little pebbles. We throw them in a situation, and God directs them so that they never return void. But they bring life or death, heaven or hell. They stand forever, for by the word we will be justified or condemned. When the disciples were arrested and put into prison, as recorded in the fifth chapter of Acts, verses 19 and 20, during the night an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. You see, God sent the angel to set them free and to tell them to go back amidst all the threats and danger and preach all the words of this life. His words are life. Don't hold back any of the message. Jesus said, Whoever will be ashamed of me and my words, of him will I be ashamed when I come in all the glory of the Father. Oh, God help all that pretend to preach the word, to see what's at stake. Will you please men or God? Will you deceive the people and come up at the judgment with your hands dripping with the blood of souls? Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, or his ear dull that it can't hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, your tongue mutters wicked things. The way of peace they do not know, and there's no justice in their paths. They've made crooked paths. No one who walks along them will know peace. You've given them smooth sayings, trusting in good works and a moral life. In vain do you worship me, teaching the doctrines and traditions of men that will perish with the using. Jesus says what he'll do when he comes in all his glory. Yes, he's coming soon. This is the time of the end. We see the signs everywhere. In this wicked and adulterous generation, in these last days, the churches have gone after the wisdom and power of men instead of the wisdom and power of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. God is calling as never before in thunderous tones to those who pretend to preach his word, to blow the trumpet in Zion and to sound an alarm in the holy mountain. Let all the people tremble. What's the signal to make the people tremble? The day of the Lord is at hand. It is even at your doors. Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord comes, it is close at hand. The great day of the Lord is near, near and coming quickly. The cry on the day of the Lord is bitter. The mighty warrior shouts his battle cry. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of trouble and ruin, a day of darkness and gloom a day of clouds and blackness, a day of trumpet and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the corner towers. I will bring such distress on all people that they will grope about like those who are blind because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood will be poured out like dust and their entrails like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. 
In the fire of his jealousy, the whole earth will be consumed, for he will make a sudden end of all who live on the earth. Hear the angels shout. The hour of his judgments has come. Repent and worship God that made heaven and earth and the sea and all that are therein. The time has come when men will not endure sound doctrine, but turn the people to cunningly devised fables, turning away from the truth. Men of corrupt minds, reprobates concerning the truth, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. Of him will I be ashamed when I come in all my glory. The last invitation is going forth. Come to the marriage supper of the Lamb. The gospel of his coming kingdom is being preached as a witness to all nations. This work will soon be done. What are you doing? Preach all the words of this life. Oh, what a calling! Oh, what a privilege! The angels that stand before the throne can't do this work. Jesus said, Wait in Jerusalem until you are clothed with power from on high. You will receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Then you will cast out devils. You will speak with new tongues, take up serpents or drink deadly poison, and they will not hurt you. You will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. They will have visions. Tell them, Jesus is coming soon. Show them the signs. The wise will know the times. The wise will shine as the firmament. They will reign, be kings with kingly authority, and bless the people as priests for a thousand years. Don't you think that it'll pay to be a true messenger or herald of his soon coming? when we will be like him and will have glorious bodies like his? Of such will I be well pleased when I come in all my Father's glory. Oh, can you not understand? He is coming as a prince of glory to meet his bride in the air, to escort his bride back to the great city, to be present at the wedding, at the marriage of the Lamb, when Jesus will present his bride to the Father. He will welcome his son's wife. He's coming in all the glory of all his holy angels. Oh, what a picture. Oh, what brightness. See, oh, see the shining hosts. Gabriel that stands before God. Oh, they're getting ready. They are tuning up the heavenly choir. They're coming. They are coming to meet us in the air. For the Lord Jesus himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. They will come in the clouds of glory. We'll all be caught up changed in a moment, have glorious bodies like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to be forever with the Lord. Oh, this is wonderful, but it's true. Oh, dear brothers and sisters in the ministry, can we miss this? When Jesus comes, will he be ashamed of us? The wicked will be completely ignored and banished from the Lord, from his glorious presence forever. For being ashamed of Christ or of his words or of his supernatural and divine power or of the works of the Spirit, 
that are foolishness to the world and to the natural man. Will you miss it all for a prominent position or a high salary or a respected social position or to please the people? What can you do in that day? Oh, God, help us to preach all the words of this life and earnestly contend for the faith once delivered to the saints. As God sent Jesus into the world to deliver his messages, so Jesus sends us into the world as his ministers to preach the gospel faithfully. Woe to us if we do not preach the whole truth or are ashamed or offended at any of his mighty works. Though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached to you, let them be cursed. As we said before, so say I now again. If anyone preach any other gospel to you than that you have received, let them be cursed. Do I seek to please men? If I wanted to please men, I wouldn't be the servant of Christ. I certify to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it from man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Hear him say he was taught by the revelation of Jesus Christ, by inspiration. No man had taught him. You see, the Bible is a sealed book to those that are lost. No one can preach the gospel except by inspiration and revelation by the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ. For he takes the things of God and brings them to us. The Lord reveals them to us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. But God has revealed them to us by His Spirit. With man's wisdom, you can only learn historical knowledge and the dead letter that kills and condemns. But the Spirit gives life and power. He brings them into the heart and mind thoughts from our loving Father who says he will reveal his secrets to his sons and daughters. Jesus and the Father will come in and abide with us and manifest themselves to us. Paul is our example. We should follow Paul as he followed Christ. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. The gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. Oh, brother, sister, don't handle the Word of God lightly, deceitfully, or in vain. But as in the sight of God, we will preach the word in the light and power of the Spirit. For exclusive products, content, and more, Visit patreon.com slash reverendalation.